Hello APC Mechanics students, today we will solve the past paper of RQ 2012 exercise number 1 Then skipping the directions and starting directly with the exercise itself Remember that the figure appears above the text Now experiment 1, a block of mass 0.3 kg is placed on a frictionless table Frictionless which means we have no friction and the energy of the oscillator is conserved and is attached to one end of a horizontal spring of spring constant k as shown above the other end of the spring is attached to a fixed wall the block is set into oscillatory motion by stretching the spring and releasing the block from rest at time t is equal to zero a motion a detector is used to record the position of the block as it oscillates the resulting graph of velocity v versus time is shown below the positive direction for all quantities is to the right this is v versus t and remember that whenever we have V versus T, we can directly start extracting some physical quantities. One of them, which is the period, which is the time taken from two consecutive peaks. Or in this case, it's easy to count from the center. So we choose a point, skip another point, and we choose this point. If the grids are divided into 0 0.5, then each one would be 0 0.1. Then the period, we can directly claim it's 0 0.7. And the maximum velocity in this case would be given by what? Now, if this is divided to 0 0.1, and we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to reach 0 0.2, then each one would be 0 0.02. Then the maximum velocity in this case is given by 0 0.16. Now, in part A, we need to determine the equation for Vt, including numerical values for all constants. Now, remember that in the case of oscillatory motion, any any quantity whether we're talking any variable of motion whether we're talking about x v or a they are either modeled by sine function or cosine function now if you look carefully the velocity in this case because we're starting from the origin it seems that it can be modeled by sine function but it's flipped for this reason, we can say that the velocity is given by a sine function because we're starting from the zero exactly as the sine function, then the phase difference would be zero, the initial phase. And we have an amplitude, which is the maximum velocity. Because this is flipped, then we will include here a minus sign in order to model correctly the velocity function. Then in this case, we can directly say that the velocity as function of time is given by minus Vm sine omega t with no initial phase because we're starting from the zero. Now Vm from the graph, which is the positive maximum value of the velocity, is given by 0 0.16 meters per second. And now, because we're asked to include all numerical values, now sine is a function, t is a parameter, they won't be replaced by anything. Vm is 0 0.16, now what about omega? We know that omega is 2 pi f, which is 2 pi over the period. And the period already, which is the time taken for one complete oscillation, we count it from the center, we choose a point, skip a point, and choose another point, or from the peaks. And remember that in the course we have explained that the period con corresponds to 4, amplitudes then this is one two three four which means that this time represents the period then divided by 0 0.7 plugging that on the calculator we would have that omega is given by 8.96 and we know that the SI unit of omega is given by radians per second so therefore the velocity as function of time is given by minus 0 0.16 multiplied by sine or modeled by sine omega is 8.96 multiplied by time so that would be it for part a now in part b they're telling us given that the equilibrium position is at x is equal to zero this is important now determine the equation for f for x of t including numerical values for all constants now we know that the position can be determined from the velocity using calculus for example now we know that if this is modeled by sine function then the position would be modeled by cosine function 
Apart from that, we can always determine the position from the velocity using calculus, which is basically integral. Then x of t would be the integral of v with respect to time, which is the integral of minus 0 0.16 sine 8.96 multiplied by t dt. Now minus 0 0.16 as a constant can be dragged out. The integral of sine 8.96 multiplied by t multiplied by again dt. Now the integral of sine would give us a cosine with an additional minus sine. Then these two minus signs will cancel. And because we're doing integral instead of multiplying by the inner derivative, we divide by the inner derivative, which is 8.96 multiplied by cosine. 8.96 t plus a constant. Therefore, the position with respect to time is given by 0 0.018, if you do this fraction on the calculator, multiplied by cosine 8.96 t plus c. Now we need to refer to some initial conditions in order to determine the value what does c represent if you look carefully they're telling us given that the equilibrium position is at x is equal to zero now this is a bit challenging in order to find what does c represent the easiest way to find what does c represent is to refer to t is equal to zero as all as we always do then if we refer back they're telling us the block is set into oscillatory motion by stretching the spring and released, releasing the block from rest at time t is equal to zero. Then time t is equal to zero refers to the one of the amplitude because we have stretched the spring. And by stretching the spring, it means that this is basically the position of the spring, the position of the block at t is equal to zero, which is a positive amplitude and it's given by 0 0.018. Why? Why 0 0.018? Because this is the value that have been multiplied by cosine that represents the maximum amplitude. Now, in order to make sure that it is a positive 0 0.018 and not negative 0 0.018, although they have said that it has been stretched and the direction to the right is given to be the positive direction, you can look at the velocity starting from t is equal to 0. The velocity has negative values. Negative value, it means that the velocity is pointing toward the left. And the only way that the velocity is pointing toward the left is that the block initially is in a stretched position and it's passing through the equilibrium position. Then at t is equal to zero, what do we have in this case? The position would be replaced by 0 0.018, which is equal to 0 0.018 multiplied by cosine of 8.96 multiplied by zero plus c. We know that cosine of zero is one. Then 0 0.018 is basically 0 0.018 plus c, which makes c to be 0. Then in this case, the position is given by 0 0.018 cosine of 8.96 multiplied by t. And now for part c, they're asking us to calculate the value of k. Let's look carefully. Do we have the mass of the oscillator? Yes, the mass is given. Why? Because we know that the angular frequency of simple harmonic motion, because we don't have friction, is given by omega, is the square root k over m. Already we have omega, which is given by 8.96. Then in this case, we can say that omega square is equal to k over m, which means that k is given by omega square multiplied by m. The value of omega is 8.96. And the mass is given by 0 0.3. Now plugging that on the calculator, we would, find, we would find that the stiffness of the spring is 24 and the SI unit of stiffness is given by newtons per meter. Now moving on to the next page, they're telling us an experiment to the block and the spring arrangement is now placed on a rough surface as shown below. The block is displaced so that the spring is compressed, a distance d and released from rest. Now, the moment the surface is rough, so we have added an additional force, which is friction, which is between the surface of contact of the block and the surface. Now, what do we expect here in this case? We won't have simple harmonic motion anymore. What would happen is two things. The amplitude 
with decrease by time what does the amplitude represent the amplitude is the position the maximum position of the block with respect to the equilibrium so because the the oscillations will stop after a certain amount of time which means the amplitude will decrease however for the period although the period will be longer but we will assume that the change in the period is not much significant in comparison with the change in the amplitude now in part d they're telling us on the dots below that represent the block draw and label the forces not component that act on the block when the spring is compressed at a distance x is equal to d2 and the block is moving in the direction indicated below below each dot so we're talking about the compression but here in the case of the compression we have uh, two configurations one which is when the block is moving it's compressed and it's moving toward the equilibrium position which is the fbd for the first one and the block is compressed and it's moving away from the equilibrium position which is the fbd2 why so because they're talking about the compression distance given by d over 2 and not the total compression which represents the amplitude now let's start by the first one apart from which configuration we can directly represent the pull of gravity which is down and the normal push in each cases then here we have also the pull of gravity and the normal push Although in the exercise itself there are no specific instructions in order to take into consideration the relative magnitude of the vectors, however I have represented the pull of gravity to be the same in both as well as the normal push. That won't change in both configurations. Now because the equilibrium position is to the right in both configurations, we're talking about the compression of the spring, then we will represent the force due to the spring to be toward the equilibrium position which is to the right now in the first one the block is moving toward the equilibrium position so it's moving from left to right and friction would oppose the motion for this reason friction would be toward the left Now in this case we're moving away from the equilibrium position so the force of the spring would be pointing also again toward the equilibrium position now because we're moving from right to left the friction would be toward the right opposite to that of motion and now that what makes the difference between a friction and the spring force so the spring force is said to be a restoring force because whatever the direction is of motion it will be always pointing toward the center however friction would be sometimes pointing toward the center toward the equilibrium or away from the equilibrium and this depends on the type of motion the direction of motion now part e which is the final part of this exercise they're telling they're telling us draw a sketch of v versus t in this case assume that there is negligible change in the period so they're telling you there will be a change in the period but considered to be negligible so now here Remember that our period is given by 0 0.7 seconds, but we're more interested not in the period, but have the period in order to pass through the equilibrium position. Then let me divide our curve accordingly. So if this is 0 0.7, okay. If you look carefully, our equilibriums are found here. We have one here and one here. So let me do them perfectly. So this is the first equilibrium position. That would be the second one after that we have one which is here okay and one at 1.4 then we would have one between exactly at the middle why I have used the same point simply because the period does not change now the only thing that we need to take into consideration is that the amplitude for the velocity will change initially we have started with an amplitude given by 0 0.16 and we're going downward now here we need to also double check that 
is our initial velocity positive or negative? In the previous part, they were telling us that this is an extension or a stretching. Here in this case, they're telling us it is the case of a compression. So in the case of the compression, the velocity initially would be positive because we're moving toward the right. The maximum velocity in this case is given by what? By 0 0.16, which is somewhere here. Now they didn't tell us to label the vertical axis. So, okay, we can say that this is a 0 0.16, it's fine. Now, from this point to this point, that would represent two amplitudes. Then, we need to make sure that even it doesn't reach a 0 0.16. And by time, it's decreasing more and more. Okay. And that's it for me in this video guys, see you soon in a new one.